I don't care what happens, how far it is, it is into the fight. If there's any trouble, I will throw one of these fighters out. I'm going to ensure that it will be a clean fight. Yeah, I think Richie Davis is the right man for this sort of fight, especially with some of the things that's been going on in the press conferences. Uh, I can't, I can't believe the excitement being generated around here at the moment. There's a real electric buzz of anticipation. Both of them with real power. Bellew believes that he's the puncher. And he says, if Cleverly is stupid enough to trade with me, I'll put him to sleep. I was expecting a very cagey opening, but Nathan come flying right out of the blocks. Well, Nathan Cleverly does have a tendency sometimes a little bit foolhardy i reckon to get dragged into a brawl Bellew leading on and you see straight away there real riot attack being read by the referee richie davis saying yeah. you use your head and i'll have you out of there yeah richie davis is showing who's boss in that those three men are ring the two fighters and there's one in control and richie davis is showing who's the boss he's not going to tolerate anything a genuine sense of animosity, I suspect, between these two men. Value stunned by the acceptance in many quarters that Cleverly is the superior boxer. Cleverly stunned by the acceptance in many quarters that Value is the superior puncher. What I've seen of these two lately, obviously, Value has always been the, the banger, everything to come forward, fight the other banger. He showed in his last fight he can box. Against Oville McKenzie. Yeah, he boxed very well. You know, a lot of people criticise him. I thought he'd done a very good job. Uh, but in Nathan Clare, we've got a, a boy who's a very good boxer who's turned into a puncher. Uh, and you know, style, styles make fights. And so far, this, this style is looking at these two stylistics. These two boys stylistically match up very well at the moment. Interesting opening round. Good shots from Bellew. That's good from Cleverly, though, by way of response. Yeah, nice replay there with Cleverly. Nice little left hook on the inside. styles of these two you suspect are going to blend to make an exciting fight certainly for as long as it lasts nice right down there by cleverly right down over the left jab and again same shot again remember bellew was put down by bob adjusaf he was down twice against oval mckenzie in the first fight although he got up to stop his man in the eighth round so he can go down just seen Bellew dabbing in his eye a little bit there then, so I'd like to see if he's got a cut. Well, let's hope not, as early as this, you wouldn't want that to be the case. No, it's, it's, it's already shaping up into a good fight already. few wise people around ringside whose, whose opinion I really value. I had a word earlier on and just said to people, you know, who do you fancy, who do you fancy? And a fair few who've been in the game a long, long time are saying Bellew might just do this. It's a, this is what makes this fight so intriguing. It's a genuine 50-50 fight. You know, Fra Frank Warren has delivered again. He's putting on the big fights that people want to see, and this was definitely a fight that everyone wanted to see. What a good opening round that was. What a good opening round. Yeah, like you said, I thought it was going to be a, a slow, a slow, cagey start. Nathan come flying out of the blocks. I'm going to put you, put you on the spot and say who won that opening round. I, I'd have to give it to Nathan, he threw the cleaner shots. Especially towards the end of the round, he's making, making barely fall short with that left jab and counting that right hand over the top. Good work of him cleverly in the closing stages of that round. Father-son combination, Vince Cleverly. Oh, look at the fans. Sharing every punch with these fighters. Twelve-rounder, it was a cracking first round. Not a lot between them. Cleverly might just have done enough. Value as a 15-year-old weighed 15 stone. He's a, he's a three-time ABA heavyweight champion. Now here fighting as a light heavyweight. Nathan seems to be targeting the body straight away. Maybe he thinks there's a weakness there. 
Or he's expecting this fight to go a little bit longer, and that, those sort of punches are going to wear you down towards the end. Possibly so, but when he first came down to light heavyweight, I think Value really struggled to make that 12 stone 7 division. I thought that the way in yesterday, I actually thought he looked pretty good. Yeah, he did. He, he, he did. He looked uh, a lot fresh, and he had done for a long time, so obviously he put the effort in. Cleverly the shorter man, but he stands tall. Value with a slight reach advantage. Both of them well over six feet. Oh, two landing with good shots. Right hand from Value, then the hook from Cleverly. And Value now is starting to unload. And listen to the reaction of the crowd. It is spine tingling. I'm not hurt, he suggests. Nice. Usually means he is. Yeah, I think it was definitely a reaction of one of them punches in there then. But you know, reco he recovered well. It was a nice little short right down. Bellew was sensible though, he didn't go throwing the kitchen sink at him, he measured the attack. At one point I thought he was, I thought he was going to let it all go, but he just seemed to slow down again. I think he realised that Clevely had uh, uh, recovered a little bit, so he slowed down that touch. Good hook though from Bellew, it's his best spell of the fight so far. Nice right hand from Cleverly. Crisp shot inside. Well, you can't take your eyes off this one, Enzo. No, it's a fantastic fight already. You know, we're in two rounds in. Nice little short right hand by Bellew again. Tony Bellew's told me he's sparred some 70 rounds with Carl Froch. Yeah, One or two whispers on the Bush Telegraph suggesting that Bellew did, shall we say, very well on occasion. We're not going to get a lot of much better sparring than that around at the moment, Carl Froch. He's had a good round here, Tony Bellew. Yeah, he's come back well and started hurt Nathan with a couple of shots. Nathan's still looking for that body shot. Good fast work rate from both men, Bellew. After shipping one to two heavy shots in the opening round, has boxed really well in this second. Good round for the Liverpool. Yeah, he goes and pulled that one back, you know, back, back in an even playing field. Well, if you'd had a huge wedge on Nathan Cleverly to win at odds on, you'd have been a little bit worried at this stage. There's a nice little short right hand on the side of the year, which uh, would definitely disorientate a fighter. But Nathan recovered well, you know, he calmed down in them ropes. Yeah, he was slipping a fair few of those, wasn't yeah, he? He wasn't quite the taking end. the punishment that the crowd thought. Yeah, towards the end, he slipped a lot of punches, and I think um, that's why Barry sort of slowed down and, you know, took his time a little bit more. Don't over tense, everything comes off his jack. Thank you, well, man. Just we'll try it on then. Oh, he's harsh, yeah? Tony Bellew now with his old amateur trainers, Mick McAllister and Mark Quinn from the Rotunda Club. Nathan Cleverly with his father, Vince Cleverly, and we move now to the third. This is shaping up into a very good fight, John. Got the Vikings, hasn't it? Yeah, you know, a lot of times a fight gets hyped up, two boys are going at it at press conferences, and the fight can be a total letdown. This has definitely lived up already. Oh, it's so nearly kicked off at the, at the weigh-in yesterday. It's a good job the big security guys were there. And, uh, Richie Davis, the referee, will have had very stern words with them in the dressing room before they came out. I, I can't imagine any M2 went to the mess along with big Dominic Negus there yesterday. I'm sure he'd have no problem slinging M2 uh, out. Dominic's quite a, quite a handy, uh, handy sort of figure to have as a security man, particularly when the gloves are not on. Exactly, and uh, he, did, he did tell me this morning to give him a mention, so there it is, Don, as you mentioned. <laughs> One of the great characters of the fight game. Still turning out for the odd uh, unlicensed bet now and again. I think he's due in action in the Circus Tavern down in Essex before too long. <laughs> a bit quieter now in the third. Yeah, part of the jabs this round, barely with people turn out, out to each other with the jab. Bellew showing that he's got hand speed, he's not being outskilled or outworked so far. And what he's doing, he's catching cleverly with that double jab, the, the single one uh, Nathan's blocking, and then he's dropping the second one in, which is catching Nathan. So much at stake. 
And what a popular win it would be hereabouts if Tony Bellew could pull it off. Incidentally, he doesn't take that suggestion that he's more naturally a cruiserweight. He's quite happy, he says, fighting at light heavyweight, and he's got the man he wants right in front of him. Well, this is what he worked for. He told people he's going to be a light heavyweight. He's got the chance tonight. He's got a, a chance to become a world champion. He's, he's up against a, a man who doesn't want to give his title up very easily. So, it's, you know, it's, it's shaping into a good fight. Judges for this, Phil Edwards, Terry O'Connor, Dave Paris. And it's rounds like this, tight rounds like this, which can be decisive. That's good from Delu, lovely hook to the body. Cleverly worked nicely off the ropes, though. Good skills from both men. Yeah, both looking for that right hand there. They're trying to time each other with the jab. They're trying to get that right hand over the other one's jab. Look of intense concentration on both men's faces. Another good round. Interesting technical round, that one. Yeah, I think uh, Tony Barry just took that round. You know, he controlled, the, he controlled the, the, the control of the ring a lot better. He used the jab a lot better. You know, but Nathan, Nathan just torn that jab out and he, he looks a lot better when he's throwing a jab rather than trying to get involved in a fight. Interesting that he's got Jimmy Tibbs working in his corner, working on the iron, just taking away the swelling around the eyes, Tony Bellew, and here you see him trying to put pressure on Nathan Cleverley in that third round. And Jimmy Tibbs, one of our most respected trainers, also giving words of advice to Bellew. There's, there's nothing wrong in a big fight like this, I'm like someone like Jimmy Tibbs in the corner. No, he can, uh, he, he can, he can let him know what's going on, he's been there a lot, a lot of times. And there's a fair few who say that Jimmy Tibbs is the best of the lot. No doubt he's been on such a long time, he's in the opposite.